So what are some arguments against political correctness, at least in South Park? Okay. Um, basically, at least through the arc specifically of season 19, you know, um, they think that political correctness hurts the people it's supposed to protect in some ways. And you see this, we'll see this in the first episode um, where all these like, you know, Cartman gets uh, you know, taco guns and pregnant Mexican women and Syrian refugees and all these sort of offensive images to attack the PC frat. Um, but, um, you know, like Parker and Stone think that it commodifies the people it's supposed to protect. It, it, this is the analogy throughout the whole, the whole arc of the season is that there's a commodification of marginalized groups in, in this way that maybe isn't so meaningful when you have, um, you know, um, these sort of equity campaigns um, to sell products. Um, you know, and it's very clear, like almost like tokenism, um, you know, versus authentic, authentic, you know, uh, respect and allyship with uh, marginalized groups. So they think that political correctness in some ways, you know, commodifies these uh, marginalized groups, turns them into, into products, which is the analogy with the ads. Um, the other argument against it, at least in South Park, and we see this with the frat, right? And I think, you know, a general critique of, um, you know, uh, Greek organizations is, you know, that, um, you know, uh, it's echo chamber. People start to become homogenous <clears throat> that, um, you know, there's less of less free thought within those within those groups. I guess you could expand that to, you know, many groups of people, cults, religious extremists, whatever you want to think about. But they use the fraternity as an analogy here for a group thing, for people who who don't have independent thought. And you know, that may not be true, but they're they're generalizing for, for effect here. And um, they show this in the frat is like people who are in the PC frat, do they have free thought? Are they independent thinkers? Um, you know, so they kind of think that people who participate heavily in political correct culture, PC culture, um, often lack uh, free thought and independence. It deprives them of those of those things um, because they're trying so hard to not uh, not offend groups in society. Um, they also critique how you know specifically with the frat, which are all uh, white bros where pc stands for pussy crushing at some point it's revealed um you know like often people who are advocating for pc culture are not part of the groups that are marginalized and that's an important point they're trying to at least make in this in in this 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 episode um you know where you have you know um white straight cis men uh, being offended for, you know, um, how other people use language, you know, and then forcing them, trying to force them to, to change. So, and the other thing that they say is like, do people who advocate for PC culture really, really s believe in it? Or do they just get off on calling out people for their microaggressions um, or for, their offensive use of language. Like, do, is that something that's satisfying, that, that call out? And that's something, that's a point they're trying to, trying to make, um, is that they, you know, like, it's, you enjoy calling people out more than you actually believe in, equ in equity is a, is a point they're trying, to, they're trying to make. That there's basically selfish motives behind this. And again, that's their perspective, but that's what they're trying to, to, um, to talk about in this arc of the season. Um, in South Park, they argue, you know, if you continue on with this, uh, again, you can tell they're very anti-PC, is that there's a consumer and product relationship that, um, like, you're buying something when you're buying into uh, PC ideology or PC culture, um, that there's a consumer product relationship there, um, that political correctness is a form of, of censorship. 
Um, and again, these, you know, as libertarians, as people who've been shited for free speech and censorship, as we'll see uh, next week, um, you know, um, and they've been censored heavily and been against censorship. Um, you know, they think that, um, you know, PC culture is a form of censorship, that it's, a, it's, it's impinging upon free, free speech. Not hate speech, but free speech. Okay, and it's hard, it's a hard, it's a murky line between what is what. Oh, thanks, man. Fucking lawn mowing. <sighs> okay, um, they question whether language is a true path to uh, equity, and that also um, sometimes people who advocate for political correctness are maybe just a little bit too sensitive specifically about it. Okay, and they ask, you know, really, are there better ways to communicate? about language and equity rather than calling people out from microaggressions? Is there a better way to bring about a more equitable society, specifically through the use of language? But like when you call your uncle out at Thanksgiving dinner for using a microaggression and use the term microaggression, is that going to get Uncle Ron to change his views? I don't know. You know, calling someone out like that, berating them, making fun of them, making them feel dumb, etc., may not be the path to equity. And I think a lot of older heads, not older than me heads, but also people my age, which I'm, I'm 40 in like a day or two, which is crazy. Um, you know, they look, look, look at that younger people who call them out for the, 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 you know, what they say and how they say it as being too judgmental, as, as you know, looking down upon them, as thinking they're stupid and, and stuff like that. And they get offended before they can even have a conversation. So they question whether calling people out for microaggression in the way that it's done is actually going to make a positive change, you know, and that's what they try to do. So is political correctness a true path to dialogue? At least the way that it's expressed, um, you know, in a belligerent um, PC bro way, okay? And also, can political correctness be intolerant? So just think about, you know, is it e extremism, you know? Is it intolerance? Uh, you know, when you won't hear out Uncle Ron's perspective and you just make him feel like a dumbass. Um, it's debatable. So it's interesting. I mean, I think it's interesting. Like, I mean, personally, as someone who, you know, uh, fully acknowledges their privilege in society and also values equity and views himself as an ally um, to marginalized groups in, in many ways and has been for a long time, I do think, you know, um, this season and this arc, you know, it kind of makes you think a little bit about how you communicate, how you communicate that message about equity to, to people. Again, this is where I want to have y'all like talking to me and saying stuff from your, from your perspective here. Um, Cause we'll talk when we watch the episode safe space where, you know, they make a comment that like, you know, the whole world is in a liberal arts college campus. And it really is an interesting thing to think about. You know, y'all spent or will spend four years at, you know, a, pretty much a liberal arts school, a liberal school at least. And where most, most people here kind of have a left-leaning view and are, you know, about equity and social justice and, um, you know, hold a lot of, you know, the beliefs of, uh, about political correctness. What happens when you, you go to other parts of the world, you go work in Dallas or you go, you know, you go work in, in, in the Midwest and, um, or, or whatever, you go work in the country side or another country, um, you know, uh, what's the real world like off of, off of a campus, you know, where not everybody or most people have those views and therefore how do you communicate those views uh, to the intolerant.